years ago, Bushama Lachlon, is there any bezuch guy in Shikar in Huam? 15, 16 years ago, I was able to list a whole bunch of things to that Lachlon. A whole bunch of stuff. I was able to say, yeah, we don't do this and we don't do that and you'll never see us do this and you'll never see us do that. Do you know what? That's gone. I can't make that list anymore. Because I listed things like bank robbery. Guess what? Home and rob banks. I listed murder. Too late, I told you last month, three of them. Just in one month, in a 30-day period. We was talking about it at home, and we was like, well, it wasn't last month, it was October. We were saying, what was October? Kill your wife month? Because we heard about three different men who killed their wives, and two of them killed them, one tried to kill her. And she, she made it out. She climbed out of a swamp. You know what? The only hope we have is Jesus. The only hope we have is his word. You know what? They're never going to, you know what? I, I'm just being honest with you guys. They're never going to make enough laws to straighten out the world. They can ban guns all they want. People are still going to kill each other. They can ban drugs all they want. People are still going to find them. They can try to make laws to teach people to be civil to one another, to do right by one another, all they want. But Chicago PD isn't going to enforce the will of God. The only way is they I want to tell you something. Uh, church, uh, you may be seated. Um, I'm talking from my heart. It's just something I feel. I'm not going to name names, but about six years ago, somebody that I know came to God. And when they came to God, they were really, really on fire and sincere. We saw it on his face. We saw on his face that he really wanted to live for God, that he didn't want the old life anymore, that he didn't even want to be the person that he was anymore. And he was excited, and he wanted to read, and he wanted to study, and he wanted to pray, and he wanted to worship. And Anna said something. She said, you know, I'm glad for him. But the crowd he's hanging around is going to teach him a false Christianity. The crowd he's hanging with, they're going to show him how to live not right for God. And you know what? Within a year, I don't even think it was a year, it was six months, he was clubbing and drinking, doing all kinds of stuff. All of the above. All of the above. And he was in church every Sunday, lifting his hands. Remember, the Bible says to lift holy hands. Do we understand what that means? Are your hands dirty with filthy money? Are your hands dirty with someone's blood? Are your hands dirty with something on them like drugs or alcohol? Guys, don't get mad at me. Cigarette stains? Are your hands dirty? The Bible says to raise holy hands. There's only one way to live for God. You know that scripture? I told you guys about it before. Where Asaph it says that I was a fool, that I almost stumbled at the prosperity of the wicked. In it he says that I washed my hands in vain. Because at that time he's feeling bad because he's going through a hard time financially. And he says, my hands are clean. Did I do that for no reason? He questions himself. But notice he makes the reference to his hands are clean. His hands don't do things that God doesn't want him to do. But here we are, we're Christians. We hold that Christian flag. I'm on a flag with Christian or something. And then we get with other people who say, yeah, I'm a Christian too. Or people who say that they're not Christian. And do they see anything different in us? 
Do they see us being different? The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. You know the word holy and separate are the same word? 